uh, we had uh, uh, NDP governments replaced by a liberal government, but um, um, it was the federal money. They, they, de they uh, gave the money for training to the province, and then they said, if you to to can you get money, you have to follow our programs. The program is a very corporatist program. It's a third uh, federal money, you know, the, the jobs uh, grants, uh, a third provincial money, a third from the employer. The, the training is directly controlled by the employer, specifically for jobs, very short term, as Norman said. And, and this um, a proposal, it, it took a while to work out, but it caused havoc for all the community-based literacy and, and training organizations in the province. Most of them had well over a third of their funding cut, some up to half. Uh, more than that, uh, the Provincial Coalition of Literacy had all its federal funding cuts. So, uh, like Norman's organization, uh, it, it has some bit of surplus to survive for a year or so, um, a bit of support, but very uncertain what type of um, uh, organization uh, will exist after these cuts. So, there's a real lack of leadership, both in the provinces, but especially across provinces in terms of the Council of Ministers of Education. If you look at all their rhetoric on, on uh, lifelong learning, their UNESCO reports, they focus very narrowly on literacy, and even that is being cut. They don't take even that, that mandate seriously. Uh, so, uh, they're very much focused on K-12 or post-secondary education, institutional education, and really don't have any uh, understanding or support for the civil society organizations uh, in education. What's the response been uh, in Nova Scotia from the, from the educational and, and community sector? Um, well, the Association of uh, Nova Scotia Community-Based Learning Organizations organized quite an effective lobbying campaign uh, when these cuts were happening. Uh, they got some publicity, they organized a right to learn campaign, got some support from some um, um, opposition politicians, but, but very limited uh, action or traction uh, in the media. Um, we've, we've had some success in trying to bring together various actors in the lifelong learning sector uh, for uh, adult learning week or kind of celebrations of adult learning and various groups like libraries, um, uh, there was a, a very progressive library system in the province. There's an article in the Globe about a new library in Halifax, but very much of a community-based organization, and that exists throughout the province. So there's some links between uh, libraries, um, uh, seniors groups, uh, some of the uh, heritage groups or cultural groups, uh, Mi'kmaq Kanamatwe, uh, the uh, Mi'kmaq organization, uh, the black black learners. There's been a lot of activity and funding for those groups. So there's there's some sense that there's a common purpose between all those groups. But again, uh, it's very difficult to hold it together. Uh, uh, something like lifelong learning is very abstract in terms of a specific campaign for cuts. It can can go on, but it's hard to get support from all those organizations. So I think that this Canadian Social Forum or the equivalent. Um, you know, there's been inc incredible community-based reaction. I think that's where the organization has to take place. We can't focus on the idea of government funding for this. We've been told, no, let's form our own organization, whether it be under the Canadian Social Forum or the People's Social Forum or provincial social forums. Let's form that type of uh, decentralized network uh, to, to fight the cuts.